Okay, so this is going to be the last video of this series, and we're just going to kind of bring it all together in this video, talk about everything that we have spoken about thus far, give you some more examples, and kind of, yeah, just kind of bring it all together. So, and also I want to make clear for all the beginners watching this, that even though I've used a lot of Forex charts in this video, obviously support and resistance is something that you can use in any market like I got a bit I got a Bitcoin chart right here that's crypto you can use support and resistance in crypto you can use it in Forex you can use it in stocks you can use it in everything everything that trades you can use support and resistance okay so we're gonna go over another example here and I posted this the other day in my free discord chat which will be a link in the video description so I want you to identify it what do you think I'm on right now remember what we've talked about so far Support when broken becomes resistance going forward. Support when broken becomes resistance going forward. Where is that level at? Where do you think I'm on right now? I want you to take a second and I want you to pinpoint it. Right here, there's your level. So why did I mark this level? Remember, what is support? Support is an area on a price chart where price has failed, where price has failed to move lower in the past. So you can see it came down. This was the absolute bottom, the absolute bottom that price had found before it had that rally up. Now, this is one of the rare scenarios where you got, um, it came down right here and literally held it just about, looks like to the penny, held it to the penny right here, which doesn't happen often. So that makes you get these really clean lows right here. It rallied up, rallied up, rallied up, and then boom, you get a huge leg lower, completely snapped that level. And remember, how do we differentiate the difference or how do we differentiate between a strong, clean break and a fake out, a stop run? One of the easiest ways to do it is by the use of the fair value gap right there. Three candles. One, two, three. There's your imbalance. And what do we got inside that imbalance? What's inside of it? Your swing levels, your previous support right there, broken, becomes resistance, it's inside the imbalance. Whenever you have levels like that inside imbalances, they're very sensitive levels. They get respected more times than not very, very well and give you some really nice opportunities, okay? So that is that level of support broken, became resistance and you could have and yeah, you can see it gave you a really nice selling opportunity. Now, is it bullish? I'm not. I'm still bearish overall on it. I think. I think we are going to clean out these lows here pretty soon, but we shall see. All right, let's pull up another chart. We actually got a few, a few scenarios in here with this AUD USD right here, four hour chart. So right here is the first one I'm going to talk about. There's our low. Remember. Support is what? Support is an area on a price chart where prices failed to move lower in the past. It failed to move lower right there. That was the absolute low to the pip before price had that really nice rally up higher. And then what happened a little bit later on? Price ended up coming back down into that level. And what do we wait for? We wait for it to sweep that liquidity. It does it. It sweeps that liquidity, purchase those sell stops out of the marketplace. And as soon as that happens, we're now on high alert for a confirmation. What is that confirmation? Well, we got to go down to a lower time frame. Again, time frame, um, it's kind of it's kind of how you want to play it. Again, like I've said before, price is fractal. What occur what occurs on one time frame to occur on another, just on a different time frame. So let's pull this up real quick. So right here, you can see now it's kind of displayed here on a five minute chart. There's that really huge low. There's that huge low that we just marked up on our larger time frame. Now we got on a five minute chart, see how it traded through that level, took out those sell stops. And now you're on this time frame, you're and you're looking for that confirmation. Okay. Now I can understand you might you might have got chalked up a little in here. And this is where a scenario where waiting for that full confirmation would be useful. What do I mean when I say full confirmation? Again, you need to watch my market structure video, which will be in the video description. But ultimately what ended up happening Ultimately, you did end up getting that move up higher. You did get a really nice retracement back up within that range, cleaned out these buy stops. And yeah, so, and that's really a reason why I don't, 
I don't like messing with anything. Me personally, I don't like messing with anything lower than a 15 minute in Forex because it's a little bit noisy for my liking. It's just, I believe it's much easier to read those larger time frames than it is with like a one minute, a five minute, because you can get caught in quite a bit of chop. But hey, some people do it successfully. You just gotta kinda tinker around with it, see what works for you. Now I'm gonna point out something else that I observed on here. I'm sure some of you caught it. Let's, let's go back to the four hour chart. So what do you think it is? I'm gonna give you a second to see if you can pinpoint it. What do you think I had my eyes on? See that? See that short term high right there? So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna plot a line right there for you. That short term high was a short term level of resistance because during this little, I mean, it wasn't a lot of time that it spent there, but that was the absolute high that price hit before you had that rally higher that went lower to grab that to grab those sell stops right here. And then what happened after grabbing those sell stops? You got boom, a huge move higher, really strong move, a lot of conviction there. And then you also had your, what else formed on the break of that level? You had your fair value gap. So if we draw that in there, remember three candles, the first and the third candle shouldn't touch. And you want to see your high inside of that imbalance. Whenever this occurs, you'll see, or those levels, they're usually more times than not really sensitive levels. They get respected greatly. And that's what we saw happen here. See that? And that's actually also, even though that's for another video, it, it's a level of support, but it's also what we would call an order block. This is all one order block right here, but that's for, that's for another video. And you can see it respected that level and made its way up higher. And really this is the, I've talked about, so that's really the signature that I use the most in my trading the resistance when broken becomes support using the signatures that I've outlined. I use that m much more than the liquidity sweep. I just much prefer this. I think it's, I think it's better. I think it's, or I've had better results with my own trading sticking with this, but I gave you a few, a few different options in this video that you can kind of tinker around with because we're not all the same. We all are kind of drawn to different trading styles based on your personality and you just got to you got to experiment around with it see what works for you. All right, let's pull up a couple more charts here. All right, so now we're going to look at a few stocks here because like I said, it's not I mean, what I'm teaching here isn't just specifically for like the forex market or even the crypto market, anything like that. You can use it in futures, you can use it in forex, you can use it in stocks, small caps, you name it. It's got it's it's got volatility, it trades, you can use these concepts. So right now we're looking at a chart, the ticker is BTB. I'm sure you already see what I'm on on this. Where is our key level of support? I want you to pinpoint it real quick. Right there, see that? Why did I mark that? And then you actually got some more right, right directly below it, which price didn't test. See that? So why did I mark that? So you can see price, it found its top up here. It pulled up, it pulled back off of those highs, came down multi-day sell-off down into our key level of support. Note the fair value gap. Note, are these levels inside of the fair value gap? They sure are. Look at that, beautiful. So you got your fair value gap right there. One, two, three, your levels, your previous resistance, broken became support or inside your fair value gap when you have this signature when you have this signature it's very very powerful now is it going to be right all the time nope nothing is 100 percent correct all the time that's trading there's no such thing as a holy grail there's no 100 percent perfection you got to accept it you got to manage your risk for those times where it doesn't work so this is but i'm telling you more times than not if you get it right if you know how to use it correctly it's a really, really powerful tool when you use, when you kind of combine the, the fair value gaps, the smart money concepts with your basic support and resistance, it makes it much more powerful, much more powerful. And you'll see 
you'll see stuff like this all the time. Okay. So that's one example. Let's go over a few others. All right. So we got a chart of BYSI right here. So you can see it had this big spike up right here. It took out these, took out these highs right here. And we created what on that push up higher? We created a fair value gap and notice what is inside that fair value gap. See this short term high, this was a level of resistance prior to that break. Cause this was the absolute high. See price came up, had a rally. This was the absolute high that price hit before it had this really large move lower, like right here. Okay, so let's plot this real quick. See that right smack at the beginning of your imbalance of that fair value gap. So now let's mark down here so you can see it. There it is. So right at the beginning of it, it tapped up into or it tapped down into the fair value gap, tested your level of support right here, and now it's rocking it up. Okay. All right, so this is actually something that hasn't played out yet, and it, it'll be interesting to see what this ends up doing. But remember what we have talked about in terms of the other support resistance strategy. So not the one resistance broken becomes support, but whenever we whenever we purge a liquidity pool like this, so you see this huge level of support that was just taken out right here. See this, if you look at my cursor. So we just purge those sell stops out of the marketplace, okay? So what's step number two? I want you to answer among yourselves. What is step number two after we, after we get that? We have to measure equilibrium. So we have to find 50% of that price range. So let's take the high, the most recent high prior to that large surge lower. So you take your Fibonacci from the high to the low and find 50%. There's 50%. Okay, so let's get that. Let's color code it green so it stands out and boom. So we got 50% at this point. We just purchased that liquidity pool. What do we do next? What's the next step? You go down to a lower time frame. So maybe we go down to a daily chart and what do you know? What do we have on the daily chart? We have our signature on Apple right here. So see how we just took out that huge major low. Remember, purge and revert. We took out a huge major level of support. We sweep the liquidity. Now, just because it sweeped it doesn't mean this isn't a clean break by any means. This is just barely picking its head below that level. That is not a clean break, okay? It just came down, take, took out those sell stops, and now I think very possibly in the future we could catch a nice little retracement within this range. So again, there's 50%. Anything below 50% is what? Anything below 50% is what? And a discount. It's cheap. It's in a discount. Anything above it is what? It's in a premium. So, I think very possibly where could we target? Good chance we're probably going to come up and attack this these buy stops right here. So, this high right here. Right below 50% equilibrium. So, that could be a possible swing. Just like that. Just like that, we just identified a setup. Could it be wrong? Absolutely. But in terms of, it's a, it's, it's a pretty high probability trade. Pretty high probability. Okay. So definitely, I would keep an eye on that. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out, see if we get that retracement or not. But yep, it's a, I mean, that's a setup. And again, if you want to play it a little bit safer, Again, what I mean when I say safer, I mean 100% confirmation because even like this, this isn't something that I don't personally like trading this way. I'm teaching it because it is another style of trading that you can partake in. But if you went 100% confirmation, you want to play it really safe. I would wait for the larger time frame structure to be 100% confirmed bullish to the upside. And again, how do we determine that? Well, we need a shift in structure. So a shift in structure to the upside would be like right here. And then we would need to see a swing level put in. That's if you want to play it really safe, wait for all that confirmation. You might miss the move or that, that original move up higher. But that's if you want to play it really safe. But I still, I still think that this is probably going to have a decent retracement here pretty soon. And yes, yeah, so I think that about wraps it up. 
Again, I want you to check out all the rest of the resources that I'm going to have linked in the video description. And I've been leaving resources in all of these video descriptions. So other videos, blog posts, all that good stuff. So make sure you consume all that material. And I think if you watch, if you watch these videos a few times, watch them a few times over, watch those videos that got linked, I think it'll start to, it'll start to click for you.